Joining us is former White House Deputy Chief of Staff and Fox News contributor, Carl Rove. Welcome, Carl. First of all, what do you make of the new Wall Street Journal poll showing former President Trump doing well in these swing states? Well, it's good news for Trump, bad news for Biden, but let's put it in perspective here. Here are the states. Um, I've ranked them by the, the margin for Donald Trump. Best state was North Carolina, which he carried last election. So that doesn't advance his cause. It just keeps him status quo. And then Arizona up by three, uh, and excuse me, up by five, and Nevada up by four. These are outside what we call the margin of error. So these numbers, you, you have a greater uh, likelihood of being actually accurate because the, uh, the, the, the margin is so big. And this is good, picks up two states, but this is 11 electoral votes. This is six. It doesn't get him to 270. Now, these are the states where we're inside the margin of error. Three points in Michigan, three points in Pennsylvania, uh, one point in Georgia, and dead even in Wisconsin. So these are close. And uh, two things about it. One is, is that in order to win, uh, Donald Trump has to win at least two of the uh, four states down here. And being as close as they are, this means that the races are, you know, look, races that are one or two points apart seven months out from an election are, are essentially dead even. Either person could win. This could be a, a coin toss. In fact, these states, you know, aren't necessarily out of, uh, out of reach. This one probably is. North Carolina, big enough margin there, and it voted for Donald Trump last time. But even there, there are some problems. Bottom line is, Trump looking good today. Can't take it for granted because too many of these states are too close. And he's got to move beyond just simply the three states where he's outside the margin of error. I, I want to do something radical, which is maybe strategize how to do more than barely win, how to go from winning by a little to winning by a lot. So polling during the primary suggested Nikki Haley supporters I, and what are derisively referred to as rhinos might not come home to the GOP candidate this fall. Is that threat still out there, and is it a real threat? Oh, it's absolutely out there and a real threat. Funny you should ask. I've got a whiteboard for that. Think about this. North Carolina was March 5th. Nikki Haley got 250,000 votes in North Carolina. That is three times Donald Trump's victory margin four years ago. Next day, she suspends her campaign. The 12th, Georgia votes, and she gets 77,000, nearly 78,000 votes. And she said, I'm suspending my campaign and ending it. And still 78,000 people vote for uh, Nikki Haley in a state that Donald Trump lost by about 10,000 votes. And then this week, this week, Wisconsin, a state that Trump lost by about 20 some odd thousand votes, Nikki Haley got 76,000, nearly 77,000 votes on Tuesday night of this week. And the same night, we have primaries in New York, Connecticut, and Rhode Island, and between one out of six and one out of every seven Republicans who turned out and voted in those primaries voted for Nikki Haley, who's been out of the race now for all of Mar for most of March and, and, and a couple of days of April for almost a month, four weeks. So, yes, there's a problem there, and Donald Trump needs to wake up to that fact. He was dismissive of it. He said some nice things on one time, and then when pressed on the issue, said, I don't think I need too many of those votes. This is a problem. He told those people during the course of the primary that if they financially supported Nikki Haley, they were, quote, permanently barred from the Republican Party. And what happened is people started printing up T-shirts saying permanently barred. He needs to heal the Republican Party. Nobody can go into a general election with a disunited party and hope to have an easy run of it. All right. Speaking of the general election, no labels is out, but Robert Kennedy Jr. is in. Does Karl Rove think he hurts Biden, Trump, or both? I, I think right today it's both. But the thing that we don't know about is how third parties, uh, how those candidates tend to play over the course of the campaign. We, you can sort of say, look, the Libertarian is going to tend to take votes from the Republican and the Green Party is going to take votes from the Democrat. He's a different character different character. The Kennedy name and his views on climate and the environment make him on the left. His views on vaccines and uh, vaccine did not put, place him on the right. So uh, today, the, the latest poll shows, the latest polls show that he's pulled equally from both sides, but we don't know what's going to happen seven months from now. I will say this. 
I don't know where he's going to be in November, whether he's going to be pulling more from a Democrat or Republican. But just think about this. The last two elections have been settled by the third party vote. In 2014, uh, 2016, nearly 7%, over 6% of the voters voted for a third party candidate. It was slightly less than 2% in 2020. Yet in each instance, in critical battleground states, they had a big impact. In 2016, the Green Party candidate in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania gets more votes than Hillary Clinton lost those states by. And in 2020, four, uh, in 2020, the Libertarian candidate, who's from your state of, uh, who is from your state of uh, South Carolina, she's a lecturer in psychology at Clemson University, Joe Jurgensen. She got more votes in Arizona, Georgia, and Wisconsin than Donald Trump lost those states by. So the third party voters this fall are going to have a huge impact on the election. We sort of know what's going to happen, uh, where the libertarian voters might go if they get traction, or we think that we sort of think what would happen if the Green Party candidates or Cornell West gets gets uh, going, where they're going to take votes from. But Robert Kennedy Jr. is going to be a, a coin toss, and let's find out uh, where the, where that coin falls. But we don't know today. Carl Rove, I got to get in touch with your agent because I got to have you back to talk about the Senate. I wanted to talk about the U.S. Senate, but but I I, I got to have you back. So I will contact one of your agents and get back on your calendar. In the meantime, thank you for joining us Love on to the do Sunday it. night. You bet. All right. Thanks for thank you, me. Carl Rove. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.